here comes five crazy time-saving game-changing and even life-changing speed hacks that you need to know about in DaVinci Resolve. So let's get into it. Now keep in mind, some of these things that I will show you are compatible with older DaVinci Resolve versions, but some of it are new features in DaVinci Resolve 17. All right, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve and if you are surprised how this program looks like, then this tutorial is, might not be good for you. Anyways, so the first thing I will show you, I called it Zoom In Face Track Effects. I tried to sell it and eventually I could sell it. It took three months, just four. Now I came up with this technique because you know this is the classic YouTube zoom in punch in effect but I wanted to come up with a way that it's super quick super fast and luckily with Resolve 17 we can do that. All right so right now I'm going to show you how to do it. So you go to the part where you Three want months. to do the That's zoom four. in face track effects and this in this case this is the clip that I want to use this effects on. So what do you want to do is just you know go to the inspector go to the transform settings and just zoom in. Zoom in however you want to zoom in. I would choose 2.2 in this case. And then what you need to do is enable dynamic zoom. So by default it will zoom out. So what you need to do is just swap the direction. So now it goes in and then you use a brand new Resolve 17 feature awesome one of the best features it's crazy so then what you do then is just go to reframe it will analyze the clip now one thing i just noticed using this thing that the first clip you analyze with small reframe will be long but actually like after you analyze your first clip the other clips will be a lot faster so now the fx is done that's four So it's actually putting keyframes there. So you, what you can do is just, you know, tweak those and just make it really, really perfect. How did you like it? Good, right? All right, let's get to the next one. I call this one fake multicam. All right, so I want to zoom in here. Eventually, want to zoom out here. Want to zoom in here. Want to zoom out here. Want to zoom in here. Oh, no, maybe I want to zoom in here and maybe I want to zoom in there. Uh, so let me just, yeah, quickly. All right, and I tried see. to sell it. And eventually, I could sell it. It took three months, just four. I think a lot of you are familiar with the multicam thing. The reason why I say fake multicam is basically because there's no different angles, just one A camera angle that I duplicated. The only difference is that on one track, the, the, all, all of the clips are zoomed in. This is the right way. Start the count watch. Count watch? Let's start the stopwatch and see how much time does it take. So what you do is just copy the whole track, zoom in on it, you copy it and just paste it to the other clips. So basically now you got one track where it's the original, original composition and stuff. You got another track, almost the same except it's zoomed in. So now what you do is just go to the media pool, find your sequence, and actually there's a new Resolve 70 feature that now you can use. Right click on it and just convert timeline to multicam clip. And now that thing is converted to a multicam timeline and then you create a timeline using that selected thing. Fake multicam. Just gonna quickly check. Yeah, I knew it. Now, what you can do is edit it. Now, keep in mind, in this view, you won't see the actual crop, but it's there. And for this particular example, you know, cut to a camera angle one, cut to camera angle two, cut to camera angle one, cut to camera angle two. I want to exaggerate it just in this example. And I tried to sell it. And eventually, I could sell it. It took three months, that's four. Obviously, there were a lot of cuts, but see what you mean. This is why I say this is the right way to do it. Because it's so much faster, you save so much time. I want to show you how others, a lot of people actually, a lot of people, and it's 
pissing me off because it's the wrong, the wrong, wrong, wrong way to do it. All right, so this is how people would normally do it. For, you know, this is the clip. They want to, they want to start the zoom in here. Let's, and they cut the clip. And what they do is just enter the zoom, enter the zoom amount, you know, just reposition it or using the smart reframe, I'll show you. But this is how they do it, that's four. And then where they want to zoom out again, they will cut it again, reset the transform values. So now we get that's the four. zoom in and they cut it again and then we get the zoom out. This is the wrong way because you lose so much time doing it now, even worse, some people do it this way, all right? They come duplicate the whole track. Then they zoom in on it, you know, just zoom in on it, reposition it, reframe it, copy the attributes, paste it. A lot of people then what, what they do is just disable it and maybe disable this one. And I tried and then, to sell it, you know, and eventually I could sell it. It took Free this is how they do it, like, you know, Four. disable it and enable it. Okay, maybe not this one, but this one. Okay, the disabling and enabling bit is not that bad. That's not what I'm saying, but still, you have a duplicate track of the same track. Why? Like, wh wh why would you do that? And just, just to show you why this is a huge problem if you do it this way, all right? Let's say you want to, you know, move this cut here. Yeah, what's happening? Obviously, this clip is not linked to this clip. In order for that to happen, you need to go in manually, you go in manually, just link it, and then you can do this. But for that, let's, let's say you have 400 clips there and you duplicate it and just go in each by each, just linking it up again, just to do this thing. Now, before I show you the first speed hack, if you like this video and if you like this channel and you want to see more videos coming in the future, please like, comment and subscribe in any particular order. All right, back to the fur technique. All right, so here we are on this timeline. I call this cut out effects. All right, so let me show you first. I tried to sell it and eventually I could sell it. It took three months, that's four. By cut out FX, what I mean is that you cut out the person from the footage, like a green screen, but without a green screen, to put in different background for entertaining or, you know, for, for a joke purpose, like in this case. All right, let me show you how it's done. So here we are without the effect, right? This is where I want to start a clip, but here's, here's the problem. I use the same zoom in track effects, right? You know, dynamic zoom and with small reframe, right? This is how we have that face tracked and the zoom in face track effect, right? Now, before we can move forward, we need to actually create a compound clip and we won't name it because who has time for that? Just cut the clip where I want to start the cutout effects and then go to the color tab. This is where the magic will happen. And now what I would do is just go to the magic, go to the magic mask tab. Draw a line there and then click on toggle mask overlay. Sometimes you won't see it right away. All right, now we got it. You can see that it's uh, not perfect. So what you can do is just go to the quality tab and instead of faster, choose better. And then it will recalculate it. So now it's being recalculated. Just look at it, how much better that it. And before we move forward, I would just, you know, crank up the blur ratio, maybe 50 and then, you know, just hit on analyze. And while we are waiting for the tracking, let me tell you about today's sponsor. Oh shit, it's done. Like I said, it's super fast. Yeah, the tracking is done. And if you look at it, it's not looking perfect. And this is an important one. This won't ever replace green screen. Maybe, maybe five years, 10 years in the future, it will because artificial intelligence will be that good. But right now it won't replace green screen. But a lot of times you won't have green screen and you still want to do this effect. And luckily you have a way to do it. And obviously it won't look perfect, but it's fulfilling its purposes. So what you need to do, okay, I will unclick that and add an alpha output, then connect the thoughts. Good, go back to the edit tab. And now the video, 
And now the cutout is done and then I would just grab a background, I would use the same one, boom, and it's done. It's super fast, like I said. One thing though, you won't, one thing though, you won't be able to play back, at least on my machine. So even if you use Render Catch Color Apple, you won't be able to play back. So what you need to do is just go here and render in place. And then you know just chose your just chose chose your weapon. I will use this one and render it out. And just you know choose a destination and then boom you got it that's four so like I said it's not perfect but it's fulfilling its purposes in my opinion all right next one now the next one I called it quick cut to the rhythm and it's a super good technique that I come up with and I think not a lot of you knew about this technique so let's get to it all right so first I will show you So what you see from that is obviously that all of these clips, all of these clips are cut to the rhythm. Now let's start it. So here we are. This is the track. You know, what you need to do is just, you know, play back and just put markers to the beat. So what happened here is that this one is shorter, but all of these are longer. First of all, I will just, you know, just make this clip manually to the length. And then what I want to do I just want to calculate the frames. So there's a quick way to do it. I will just cut it and just go to change clip duration and then I have it. It's saying it's one second A frames. Now I think let's just see another one. All right, one second 12. Now <laughs> this means that I'm really not good at putting down the markers to the beat. But never mind, actually I calculated it and it's one second 10 frames. All right, so let me just go back. And then what I would do, and just put all of these clips here, you need to select the clips. Now, for this to work, you, this is very important. It shouldn't be any space between the clips, all right? So everything is aligned perfectly. And then you select the clips, go to dynamic edit mode. Actually, let me show you why you need to go to dynamic edit mode. I will change the clip duration and just, you know, just select one second, 10 frames. All right, what happens this way? Boom. You have it, but there's all these spaces between them. So what you need to do is select it, go to dynamic edit mode, change clip duration. If you don't know the shortcut, just go in here and change. Oh shit. Oh, yeah. this, this is what happens when you know the shortcut, but don't know where to find it. Change clip duration, put it one second and 10 frames. And boom. You might know about changing the clip duration, but actually I think not a lot of you know that if you change the dynamic edit mode and then change clip duration, then you won't have spaces. Let's look at it. All right, so now it's done. And then what you can do, you know, just, just manually, if, if you need to just, you know, just one or two frames, just manually align it. But basically, basically that's it. It's a super easy and a super fast way to do it. And you can use it to do quick, 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 super quick, cut to the beat, edit, just in a matter of seconds. All right, go to the next one, which is the final one. I call the next one quick audio mixing. I love this technique because it's super fast to mix the audio. Let me show you. First, what you need to do is just set it up in Fairlight so basically you add you you need to add two separate channels for your music and rename it music eq and music and then for the music eq you need to turn in this eq with these settings good and the other one you, you you're not doing anything right and there's another thing that you can do which is again a time saver you can turn down the volume on the EQ because it's not just about EQing it, but just turning it down to the desired amount. And then boom, you're all set. And then you go back to the edit tab. And what you need to do, this is like super quick. You go to the part where you want to, you know, divide your track, you divide it, you pull it up and boom, listen to it. You basically have done it. Yeah. Then you're doing it wrong. Here's why. Oh, 
there's one simple reason why that's not a good idea. After this, what I usually do is just go and show the show the meters and just listen to solo this layer and just listen to the background music layer. In my opinion, it should be around minus 20 to minus 30. You have the rough cut, but here's how to make it better. To fine tune your mixing, what you need to do is just add in more frames. In this case, I'm going to add in more, let's say, I think I will add around 10, 10 new frames, all right? Then select these and add in a transition and then just pull it out, use 10 frames, and then just listen to it. Here's one. Of course, you can go here and then again, just add in 10 more frames, select this, select that, and in a transition, and then boom. There's one simple reason. Again, it's super cool, super fast, and I think not a lot of you knew about this workflow. All right, so that was a five crazy speed hacks in DaVinci Resolve 17. I hope you liked it. And if you did, please support this channel by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this channel.